Hi, I'm Andy Webb from BeClever with yourcash.com. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the final part of my £1,000 money makeover. The whole idea behind this series, all parts of it, has been the easy, simple things that I used to do when I met families as part of Channel 5 Shop Smart Save Money to make over their finances, find the ways they are spending money they don't need to be spending, cut back on some of that essential spending and give them at least £1,000 back in the bank over the next 12 months. Now, you can take the things that I've shared in these videos one by one over once a month, once a week if you want, or you can try and cram them in over a day uh, because you literally, if you've got the time and all your sort of bills and things all kind of come together at the same time, you could blitz this in a day and be at least £1,000 better off. But in fact, if you've managed to do something on every single one of these videos, then I'm certain you're looking at a much, much, much higher return than just that 1K. Anyway, like I said, this is the final part. And what I want to deal with here is possibly one of the biggest money savers out there. If you have got any kind of credit card debts, overdraft, store card debts, anything like that, and you are paying interest on it every single month, then potentially we're going to blitz that £1,000 just in this episode. If you only watch this one part and haven't done the others, I'm confident you could still save yourself £1,000, £2,000, £3,000, potentially over a number of years, because that's just how much credit cards can cost you if you don't do them right. So here you go, here's part 12 of my 1K money makeover. Okay, so I've got my phone here for some notes. I want to get this exactly right, just to show you the importance of getting your credit card debts in order, making that debt as cheap as possible and paying it off as fast as you can. So I'm taking here quite a conservative amount on a credit card, quite a low amount pretty much compared to actually what some people have out there, on the average that people have on credit cards. But let's just take £500 on a credit card. Now, if you're just making that minimum repayment every single month, okay, it's going to take you a long time to clear that debt and it's going to cost you a lot of money in interest. Okay. Now, the way minimum repayments generally tend to work is it's a percentage of your total amount you owe or and sometimes also uh, at least a minimum of that. So it could be that it's uh, 2% of what you owe, but a minimum of £5, for example. So you never pay less than £5. Now, the point of this, why it's important to have that minimum one uh, amount on there is the percentage keeps getting lower and lower and lower and lower. If there isn't anything, it can go below that £5, keep dropping down and really stretch it out. But even so, having such a small amount as your minimum repayment, that's not going to be any good either. Okay, so let me give you that example, that £500 debt, and let's say your credit card is 19%, and lots of credit cards are higher than that, right? Now, a minimum of £5, as I say, on that, or 2%, whichever is higher, okay? It could be at the start, it could be higher than that, you never know. Now, it would take you close to 18 years to clear that debt. 18 years, right? And it would cost, it's just the interest, right? So you borrowed £500, it would cost you £842 extra in interest over those 18 years, right? What, I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? And that's just 500 quid. So, you know, extrapolate that to a higher uh, amount and that amount you're gonna pay in interest and the amount of time it's gonna to take to pay it off is gonna be longer and longer and longer. Now, there are some rules that are gonna try and stop this happening so much, it's kind of persistent debt. The idea being that you can't have something going on for that long and what credit cards will do is they'll try and encourage you to do what I'm gonna tell you to do now. But it's better that you do this yourself straight away than wait two or three years for the credit card companies to get in touch and say, uh, you're not paying off enough on this card, it's gonna take you uh, forever to clear this, it's gonna cost you too much more, right? And there are connotations that they can also sort of hit your credit file, take away your card, things like that. So you wanna be in charge of this yourself, you wanna get on top of this as soon as you have any spending on your credit card. This is obviously assuming you can't pay it off in full every single month, which is the best thing to do with any credit card borrowing, okay? So let me give you an example. So that one there, I said the minimum was either the higher of 2% or 5%, right? Now, if you just set that minimum at £25, which, let's face it, £25 every single month, it's not all the things I've spoken about so far, you should be able to find somewhere to find £25 of savings every single month, right? It's just, it's cutting down on some of the food things I talked about. It's uh, going out less or whatever it is, but this is an important one to do, okay? But let's say just £25, okay? You could do higher, obviously, but just £25. Now, if you did that as your minimum, so every single month you pay 25 quid, you would clear that debt in just two years and the interest would be just 95 pounds. So you're saving yourself 700 quid just by, rather than saying, oh yeah, I'll pay the minimum every single month, just by selecting an affordable amount. 
And obviously the higher it is, as I say, the quicker you pay it off and the lower that interest will be, right? So this is vital, this is massive. And as I said, that was a small debt. So the bigger debt, if you can do this, if you can pay off 50, 100 quid every single month, whatever it might be, you know, it's just by, you have to take that action. You have to say, rather than tick that box when you open apply for the card or get in touch and say, I don't want to pay the minimum, I want to pay this amount. Literally, on the shop, smart, save money, I saved people thousands of pounds, those who had big credit card debts by doing this, thousands of pounds in interest over that time, okay? It's phenomenal. Now, that's a great way to start, but you can take this one step further if you have got a credit card debt. And what you wanna be looking for here is a balanced transfer credit card, a 0% balanced transfer credit card. The way this works is you will take, uh, you apply for this new credit card, this balanced transfer credit card, and you will transfer the balance over to the new card. Now, there's often a fee that's associated with that on most of them. Sometimes there isn't, and in which case, fantastic. But then sometimes a fee, 2 3% of the balance you're transferring over. But then once it's on that card, you have a set period, set amount of time where you do not get charged any interest. Now, I thought everyone knew about this, but I was chatting to a friend recently who had some credit card debts. She hadn't heard of these. She didn't know they existed, right? So you could be one of those people as well. So don't, it's, it, this, is, this is such a fantastic way to try and reduce the cost of your debts. Because what it means, you've moved that money over, say we're a fee or not a fee, depending. You've then got anywhere between sort of six months and maybe three years to clear that debt where no interest is charged. So let's go back to that 500 pound debt. Okay, the moment I'm saying if you increase the payments to 25 pounds a month, you'd save yourself 700 pounds in interest. You'd only pay 95 pounds in interest, okay? Well, if you had it on a 0% card doing the same thing, you'd pay zero interest, nothing at all. It would just be the amount of money you borrowed, okay? And again, same thing, you wanna pay off as much as you can every month to clear it before that 0% period ends, because otherwise you get hit with some high uh, interest rates again. But this is a, a, really, a, if you've got a credit card right now, look for a balance transfer card if you can. Do a soft check, you can do these kind of like searches to find out if you're gonna be pre-approved or your chances of getting it. So it reduces the risk if you get rejected. I've got a video for that, that if you wanna watch that, I'll link to it here to make sure that, that if you, cause every time you get rejected, it hits your credit score. So do this, right? This is a fantastic thing. Apply for that card, transfer your balance over. Uh, and I've got articles I'll put in the notes for more information about balance transfer cards. You can read more information. Do that and then work out that plan, how much you can afford every month to clear it before that 0% period ends. So those two things combined can save you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on your credit card debt. Now you can do something similar if you've got any store card debts or you've got overdraft debts, okay? Overdrafts in particular are really, really bad debts. People don't think of it as a debt. They think, oh, it's, you know, it's just in my account, it's fine. But actually, they are not good. Rates are going up to around 35, 40% in most banks right now. That's a huge amount of money to borrow on overdrafts. Okay, so you want to avoid them unless you've got an interest-free buffer for a few hundred quid or whatever, okay? But you want to avoid them generally. And likewise, store cards, they might have a 0% period to start off, but again, I filmed with a family on the show who uh, she had no idea that once that period ended, that interest was charged, okay? And that meant she was getting charged a fortune in interest as well. So same as no credit cards, but people don't think of it in the same way because they've come into it in a different approach. Anyway, you can't do a balance transfer credit card to move your money over with either of those, okay? Because you need a credit card to, to do a balance transfer to another credit card. However, there is an option called a money transfer card, which works around pretty much the same way. The main difference is, uh, rather than transfer the money to a credit card from this balance, tra from this money transfer credit card, you're transferring it into your bank account. So straight away, let's say you've got a grand on a money transfer credit card and you've got an overdraft for a thousand pounds, you transfer it into your bank, straight away that overdraft is wiped out. Now you still owe that thousand pounds, but it's on a 0% card. And again, it might have a fee of three, 4%, something like that as you would get with a balance transfer card, but at least you're on it, no interest is being charged compared to potentially say 40% on your overdraft, okay? Similarly, you can do the same thing. Transfer the money into your current account and then use that to pay off your store card. Potentially use it to go towards a loan or something like that. Now the problem you do have with balance transfer cards and money transfer cards is there will be a credit limit. And it's difficult to know a lot of the time when you apply exactly what that's gonna be. So you might find it only covers some of your debt, not all of it. Okay, so anything that's left over you can't cover. Follow that same principle I said about the start. You wanna be paying off as much as you can every single month because that means you've got a card for long, for a lot shorter time and you're gonna be charged a lot less interest overall. The total amount will be much smaller. 
Okay, this is a big, I've left it to last, I think it's one of the biggest and best ones if you have any kinds of debts like that. Now, you can also, if this is not gonna be a viable option for you for whatever reason, um, you can also look at getting cheaper loans. If you have a loan already, see if it's possible to get a cheaper loan. You know, when interest rates are low, they might also bring down the interest rate on loans and you might be able to have a loan to pay off another loan. Although do watch out if there's any penalties for early repayments and things like that. Couple more things to touch on. Uh, back on overdrafts, by the way, as well. Of course, if you only dip into your overdraft occasionally, that can be costing you some money. Not a huge amount, but it still all adds up. Think about switching to a bank which has a 0% interest buffer, okay? If you can do that or switch to one which maybe has lower interest charges, it will save you money, okay? And bank switching is really easy. Again, I've got more information about that which I'll put in the notes so you can read all about how to do a bank transfer, but maybe, that should be a priority when you're switching bank as opposed to the bonuses or interest. It might be that reducing those overdraft charges is the way forward. And finally, this is a sort of going away from the 1K makeover a little bit, but if you're finding, despite all the things over my 1K money makeover, despite the fact you're hoping to reduce the cost of your debts right now, if it's still not enough and you still haven't got enough money to get through the month, right? And particularly if you've got maybe you've got the debt, this is the debt episode, if you've got debts which are kind of overwhelming you and you can't see how you can make uh, payments more than the minimum on these multiple debts, you haven't got enough money every month to buy food at the supermarket, to buy petrol for the car, right? You have to put that on more loans, more borrowing. Then you need to get some help. You need to get some support. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not scary. There are people who will support you. There's fantastic charities out there like Step Change, like Christians Against Poverty. There's organizations like PayPlan. All of these people do it for free, okay? Don't just Google debt advice, free debt advice, because you might end up getting some companies which are doing it for profit, okay? Go to someone like the Money Advice Service, go to someone like Citizens Advice, and use their websites to find free, friendly uh, advice on your debts to help you get out of that, help you take those next steps to maybe getting that behind you, okay? So that's one last thing to touch on. But hopefully, even if you are struggling a little bit, or whether you're doing all right, the videos, they've done enough to help you have a lot more money in your bank to really make a difference to your life every single year. Don't forget to check out the playlist if you missed any of these videos. Uh, you can watch all of these episodes. As I say, take your time, blitz them, but please do check them all out because I really promise you, you're going to save yourself some cash unless you are just ridiculously super savvy, in which case, thank you for watching. <laughs> I do really appreciate you still watching this when you know uh, so much about money saving and being better with your finances. Please do hit subscribe as well on the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up, make a comment on this, share it with your friends if you think they'll find it useful. And until next time, I'm Andy Webb. Cheers.